So another season of F1 has been and gone and is now in the history books. And while that does make me want to cry like Brad Marchand losing the Stanley Cup, it does mean that there's some off-season content from me for you guys to take in. As looking back, it's fair to say that some drivers definitely didn't perform, not naming names, but on the flip side, there were some that did incredibly well, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in today's video, as of course, it wouldn't really be F1 and F1 YouTube if I didn't give you my thoughts on the entire thing and my top drivers for this year. Now, before getting fully into the video, I do have a couple of honourable mentions who didn't quite crack that top five list, but I definitely think deserve a shout out for their performances across the year. Now, the first of those is Carlos Sainz, who is one person who did incredibly well this year. It's his third season now in Ferrari, and of course was the only person to win a race who wasn't a Red Bull driver. However, throughout the season, he was generally outraced and outqualified, especially by Leclerc. And although they finished very close on points in the end, Leclerc, I would say, had more of those unlucky results that really he couldn't do much about. Sainz, though, definitely did have a really strong performance throughout the entire season. With Carlos, I would say that throughout the season, the reason he's only in the honourable mentions is because he was generally outraced and outqualified by his teammate Leclerc. Don't get me wrong, he did have some bad luck of his own. You consider he didn't start the race in Qatar as just one example. But still a driver who's put together a very solid season and was in with a shot of fourth place in the final race of the year, so you can't really fault him there. Now, the second person that I have on my honourable mentions list is Alex Albon, the Williams driver who's now spent a couple of seasons with the team and is really taking stride. Previously, he'd had a couple of good years, but this year he really kicked up another gear. It's hard to put him in the top five list just because it's Williams and where they are. It's really tricky to judge just how good the season was but he was the only person in the entire grid to fully outqualify his teammate 22 to 0. Plus you factor in how many points he scored, he almost got half of what the Alpine guys got. And when you look at the difference in car performance there, that just shows how amazing he was. Talking of points and you've got 27 out of 28, that's the biggest percentage of points for anyone in the entire grid and their team really propelling them to what was seventh place in the championship in the end. The other big factor for Alex is also when you look at his finishes, he never finished higher than seventh, which means those good performances in his Williams were really consistent. It wasn't like all of his good performances or all of his points, I should say, came from just the one race. So my second mention there obviously is Alex Albon. Getting into my top five and at number five, I do have Charles Leclerc. Now where to start with Charles? It's been an up and down season, some unlucky moments, but some amazing ones as well. And I want to start with that, his elite qualifying pace. We see now that yes, Charles is a little bit of a qualifying merchant. He has probably the worst qualifying to conversion ratio for wins in pretty much F1 history for someone who's had a number of races, but still to be able to put that car onto pole position when Max Verstappen and that Red Bull are so good, especially towards the end of the year, it was five front row starts in a row and a number of pole positions there. That was really, really quality to see. Plus, when we got to race day, he did incredibly well. We saw him towards the end of the season really challenging both the Red Bulls and Max Verstappen and really getting the most out of the car every opportunity he had. Putting up a fight whenever he had the chance and managed to get past Checo for P2 in Vegas, albeit Sergio Perez defended P2 about as well as Andre Onana defends Man United's goal, but still he had to go that, he had the opportunity and did so. Not to mention as well throughout the season, the amount of zero point scoring occasions he's had that really weren't his fault. Starting off with say DNFs in Netherlands and Australia. Then again, that is what happens when you get a bit too close to Lance Stroll on race day. But there's other things to consider such as DNFing in Bahrain through no fault of his own. And then of course you have him getting disqualified after the US Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas. And so when you take all of that into account, he easily should have been in fourth place, arguably challenging for third with Lewis Hamilton up ahead. In fourth place, I do have Lewis Hamilton, and although he's finished higher than a lot of people in this list, I still only put him fourth just because there were a couple of moments, especially at the very last few races, that weren't really up to his standard. However, if you take away those final three races, it's an incredibly consistent season. You take away those last three races, apart from Qatar and Austria, he finished every single one inside the top six, which I didn't even realize before looking up the stats for this video. To finish that high and that consistently, considering that this year we had arguably 10 drivers at points that could all finish within the top six, shows how just how consistent he's been with a Mercedes car that was never really the second quickest, was always kind of third, fourth, in and around that kind of range. 
Add on to that, you have a number of podiums this year behind really only sort of Alonso and Norris and the Red Bulls, tied I think with Charles Leclerc for podiums. And then you add on things like his pole position in Hungary where nobody really expected that out of that Mercedes car. It is a Lewis track, but still to pull that out of the bag is really something quite special. He also had the closest finish in second place to Max Verstappen, just over two seconds away in the USA, other than Leclerc in Vegas, although Verstappen did slow down to let Checo try and defend from Leclerc. So you take that into account and there's an occasion where you can say he could have possibly been challenging for that win, which in that Mercedes car is all you could really ask for. But finally rounding up with Lewis and you look at the points totals, he's obviously finished in third place fairly comfortably in the end, and to only lose out to the two cars that are the most dominant Red Bull in history, that's a pretty good achievement. In third place, I have the veteran of F1, Fernando Alonso, who at the start of the year showed real elite pace and just amazing speed in general. His race finishes were exceptional, finishing on the podium seemingly every single time. It was like he was the only person capable of getting on the podium consistently that wasn't a Red Bull. In fact, five of the first six races he finished on the podium were the only one he didn't, finishing in fourth. Talking of those first six races as well, one of those was Monaco, where he very easily could have taken a win had they not sort of messed up with the strategy. They pitted for dry tyres when it started raining, something I'd usually expect Ferrari to do. But he then came back out on track, had to come straight in again and ended up behind Verstappen. Had he swapped straight onto wet tyres, who knows, that's an Alonso win. In terms of the standings, obviously he took home fourth place based on the amount of podiums, finished tied on 206 with Leclerc, but he did hold on to third place for a long time in the season. It wasn't until we got into the second half of the season and the Aston Martin sort of really fell away that he started to drop a little bit. And to be honest, if that Aston Martin, had they not gone in the wrong direction with their development, he definitely would have been up there getting points, podiums and more so, and definitely would have been up there at least in third place, I would say, in the championship arguably pushing up towards that Checo mark. Talking of Checo and the stat I find most amazing for Alonso in this whole season is that he only finished with one less podium than Sergio. Admittedly, Sergio's not had the best season, but still, to only have one less podium than the most dominant car in F1 history, that's quite an achievement. All of this, however, is before even talking about his teammate and the battle that they had as he finished 206 points to Lance Stroll's 74. Then again, this is Lance Stroll, so maybe take that with just a pinch of salt. But still, he was basically single-handedly carrying their battle with McLaren for fourth place and a couple more points from Stroll and Aston Martin would have had it. In second place, I have Lando Norris. And remember, with this McLaren at the start of the year, it was bad. And I mean really bad. Okay, maybe not 2021 has bad, but still, it really wasn't too great. In fact, in the first eight races of the year, he finished 17th in four of them, and in seven of those eight races, didn't finish inside the top eight. He had just one sixth place finish, which was the only one that really scored him some points. So effectively, you then get to Austria, where McLaren brought the upgrade, put it on Lando's car, did exceptionally well. Finished fourth in that race, and then second at the next one in Great Britain. And I remember watching from the stands in that one, the roar when he took the lead and was leading his home Grand Prix for a good number of laps. The pace was there, the car finally looked good, and he really took advantage. Not to mention the fact that he also had five more second places throughout the rest of the year, which, believe it or not, is more second places than any other driver on the grid, including Sergio Perez in that Red Bull. As Lando seems to be picking up those second place trophies, like Charles Leclerc picks up pole positions, which then again both lead to the same thing, which is a Max Verstappen win. But still, you look at Lando's season as a whole and also even compare it to his teammate Piastri, who, yes, is a rookie, but still had a good season, was one of the best rookies of all time, arguably, that we've had when you consider all of them. And Lando's done incredibly well to outscore him in a similar manner to Fernando Alonso and Stroll, Max Verstappen and Sergio Perez. When we talk about pairings that have kind of demolished their teammate, yes, Piastri's a rookie, but points wise, Norris has done that. So when you look at all of that and you add in those P2s, five of them, that's what puts him just above Fernando Alonso for me. And then finally in first place is obviously Max Verstappen. Who else did you think I was going to be putting here? The most dominant season of all time through a number of different statistics. 19 of 22 wins, which sets the record. 10 wins in a row, 7 wins in a row, which is the longest win streak and the third longest tied in history all in the same season. 
Don't forget that's going to carry into next year, so a good start, and he could even break his 10 again. But for Max Verstappen, you know, you look at all these records he's set, ones that have stood since the very beginning of Formula 1, such as 75% win ratio, is now 86.35, I think it is for him. Just to put that in perspective, next year we've got 24 races, someone would have to win 21 of 24 in order to beat that record, and that's one of those ones that I just can't see being broken, probably ever. And that's just when you look at Max Verstappen as an individual, all of his records that he set this year, look at where his teammates finished. Because a lot of people will say, oh, it's just the car. But clearly, Perez didn't quite get to grips with that car as well as he might have liked. And Max Verstappen finished with over double Perez's points. You could literally take two Sergio Perez's, Sergio Perai, not sure what the plural is there, but you could take two of them, stack all their points on top of each other, and they're still not at the level of Max Verstappen, which just shows exactly how dominant he's been. And so when you consider all of these records, all of these performances versus his teammate, how well and how consistent he's been in every single race, just one of them in Singapore not finishing on the podium, he even averaged more than 25 points per race. He averaged something like 26 points per race when you consider fastest laps and sprint weekends. That for me is a stat that gets it. He's averaged more points than are available for the race win every single week. So there you have it, my top five drivers for this year, a couple of honourable mentions with Carlos Sainz and Alex Albon, and then the top five of Charles Leclerc, Lewis Hamilton, Fernando Alonso, Lando Norris in second, and of course Max Verstappen in first place, my best driver this year. But anyways, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed, do make sure to give the video a thumbs up and get yourself subscribed to the channel for more content that will be coming your way in the off season and towards next year. I can't wait to sort of ramp up again. But until next time, take care.